welcome back to another uh, trainer talk segment. There's a name for this segment now. Uh, I'm here with Vincent from KD Trainer. Hello. And again, the purpose of this uh, talk show is to discuss and answer your questions. Uh, personal trainers, trainers, and people who are interested in becoming trainers out there. If you have questions, then this is the platform that we provide for you guys. So we're going to start Vincent, with uh, the first question that we received from the trainer, uh, I think. He said, or she said, how to prevent myself from getting bored when training new clients. Meaning, clients keep coming in, mm -hmm. you train them every day, how do you stop yourself from being bored in doing that? What do you think? Mm, in my past experience I did today, I would say that most of the clients they are different, even though they might have almost similar kind of uh, training styles when you approach them. But in the end, their personality is different. So by the way itself, when it comes to it, the communications and also how you integrate in terms of how the workout is going to be or in terms of how, how, how the nutrition side is going to work, it's going to be slightly varied according to each client. And as for my case, I always try to bring out new ideas when it comes to it, working out. So sometimes the client will receive a new sort of program after a certain amount of time. Well, yeah. So this is almost how I do it. Not so sure about all. What about you? I would say my answer would be quite similar to yours, I would say. So I agree with that. I mean, these clients are all individuals. They're different people. Mm -hmm. And just like when you're dealing with people in your life generally, you meet different people, different personalities, different interests, different uh, backgrounds from history. So all of these things can be very interesting and far, far from boring. So I think um, if you are a trainer and you're getting bored with your training new clients, what you can do is learn a lot more about your clients, discover who they really are, find mm -hmm. interesting points, then your work will feel less boring. But do you try to uh, like try to approach them with different kind of workout methods based on their personalities? Like example, maybe personality A is much more outgoing. So we tend to give them a workout that is, is more it's more catered to their personality, maybe more place on more dynamic or more moving around when it comes to it's a very outgoing kind of clients. Mm -hmm. Do you do that to your clients? No. Not always. What I tend to do is the training will be tailored for their needs, mm -hmm. but the way I interact with them will be different. For someone who's talkative, I'll just match that level of talkativeness. Mm -hmm. For someone who's a bit more quiet, then I they prefer being in a quieter situation, so then I would just, you know, quiet, maybe even, you know, don't play any kind of music and just let them be in the moment. So the way I approach them is always based on oh, exactly. their communications. Exactly. The way always I see it. Yep. Okay, I would say mine is more towards both, but I think I, I use, I utilize exercise more. Because I strongly think that when we're in a different kind of environment and also kind of exercise, you tend to bring up something more like mm -hmm. just what you are. That's good. So that's why I'm doing sense. If you can match the, uh, Exercises to their personality in the show. That's a good approach. Anything to add on? You okay? You have to bear in mind though. I mean, uh, because again, people are individuals and you are yourself an individual. So sometimes you do get clients who may not match your personality type. For example, he's, this client, hypothetical client, is very talkative and you're very quiet. So obviously, there's a mismatch that and you might get bored with that or feel awkward. So this is bound to happen. So sometimes you just have to bear with it and be a good professional. Yeah, but my personal advice would be always dare to try things. Mm. Even even though they might not work, but this is how experience goes. True. And also experiment things. You have to try it. If you think it's not working, then you try another way. Don't just stop there and think it's the end of the road by just using one solution to it. Exactly. Or, or don't cut yourself short by saying, I'm getting bored with this one. Yeah. Okay, next question is, how do I get into the fitness industry? Vincent, let's start with you. Me. If you want to share your personal experience or if you have other ideas. My one was, uh, I was pretty much originally being discovered, which is, I think is a good word to say that. I was discovered. Yeah, by another gym members in, uh, in the gym they're working out at. 
and uh, yeah, he started to pull me into the fitness industry. But so sooner or later, I actually discovered him trainer. Uh, surprisingly, in the gym that I used to work. But this is how I get known uh, Aaron first, and after that, I get known Lizon. And uh, in a month time, it just the transition was very very shift because you can see that our visions and the way how we do stuff is very aligned. So by just speaking an hour of talk, an hour to Aaron, I already can see the pictures of working along with Nizong both and Aaron. So yeah. And nice uh, one. In, yeah. This so there you go. That's that's one way for you. If you're interested and you think you have the chops to become a good personal trainer, come here and talk to us. <laughs> or talk to Vincent personally. <laughs> Uh, as for me, I would say, if you are completely new to the field, I would say, do exactly that. Go meet a trainer first, have a chat, talk about it, understand what this is about. Because I think if you are not in the industry, you may have many, many misconceptions. You think it's all about grunting, it's all about, you know, being huge and have veins popping. Or maybe some other misconception. So, you know, meet with the real trainer, have a chat, talk. I would say do your due diligence research. Mm -hmm. And if you find after doing your research and talking to a real uh, trainer, maybe multiple trainers, then you'll discover this if this is the right thing for you. Then if you're doing it right, if you're already doing your research, you're already talking to client um, trainers. I think eventually you'll be just naturally. But uh, yeah, as for what Nizong suggested, I think it's very good. First approach that uh, layman like how I used to be, should be, the first thing that we should be doing is do more research. You know, I think until today, still a lot of people have expectations of when it comes to a personal trainer, they imagine themselves training all the celebrities, you know, like maybe huge men or even uh, like Chris Hemsworth, they think how how the coach training the athletes or celebrities, this way how you approach it in a real reality client. But when in fact this yes, was almost totally opposite <laughs> yeah, from yeah, what I'm observing and what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So research is very, very important, just like how you decide your careers or decide on what courses you're going to take for your degree or diploma. Always do more research and do more comparison on what kind of job you're going to or what company you're going to if you decided you want to be a person. Nice. It's all for me. Cool. Okay, moving on to the uh, last question for this segment is As a trainer, should I train my clients with my own workout program? Minutes you go. Yeah, I think, and, and also your own nutrition way. And that, you know, on my own. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in the past, I actually did that. We don't have any experience when it comes to person training. I just duplicate whatever I learned, and I think it's applicable for me on top of all my clients that I initially had. And sooner or later, I'm, yeah, you're going to slowly discover that everyone is different, like almost like what I answered just now. You're going to find out everyone is different, their level of fitness is different. You know, even for females and males, they, they have almost have different kind of trainings when it comes to it, different kind of genders. I mean, let's not talk about the fitness levels. So almost everyone is different. So when you are putting yourself not in your client's shoes, what happens is you're gonna find out that sometimes it's not gonna bring any results. Mm. Or on another way, you just gonna be bringing a very bad service to your client mm. you know, because you're not personalized their training as what well, exactly. as most of the trainers are being promised to do to them. And always remember, we are personal trainer. We are not general trainer. Exactly. We don't prescribe a general training or. Like by cookie cutter yeah. programs to everyone, your personal. So as the name it is, we should make sure that our program is also personalized yeah. for everyone. Same goes to the diet, our personal nutrition plan. Well, you took the words right out, out of my mouth. Okay. So my answer is that it's called personal training, and you are a personal trainer. Therefore, the way you train your clients should be personalized. Again, clients are individuals, different needs, different limitations, previous injuries. Uh, fitness or medical history, mm -hmm. so you have to take all of that into consideration. Yeah, but there is one place, though. I mean, that maybe you can use your 
own program for your client if the client is exactly like you. <laughs> you know, you, you're trying to lose weight, your client is trying to lose weight, same height, same background almost, then why not work out together? Yeah, in that case, your client wouldn't be your client, your client <laughs> would be your peers, and your peers would be your colleague. Probably. But you get the idea. Uh, I mean, I think maybe this is not fully related to this question, but it's somewhat applicable. <laughs> Um, if you have lost weight, then I think you're best suited to handle clients who are trying to lose weight. And if you have gained weight and you're struggling with gaining weight before, so if you have gained weight, muscle mass, then I think you're best. Yeah, I think that would be a suggestion for the first start when it comes exactly. to coaching when you first start. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you cannot venture into other types of specialties. Exactly. It, can, it can always be jacks of all mm-hmm. fits when it comes to personal training. Mm-hmm. And we strongly believe that there's no limitations to this. How your career, how far your career is going to expand to. But as for what Mizon mentioned, if you want to play it safe, always do things that you're much more familiar with or things you're specializing. You always start with your comfort zone and you can slowly explore yourself. Yeah. Okay, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.